Hello and welcome to a brand new series of game development tutorials on how to make your own visual novel style game in Unity. This video tutorial series will guide you through everything you need to know and I'll even provide all the scripts and assets to you along the way for free. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload and feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll find all the assets and scripts we use in this series there too, along with plenty of other things, and you can also join as a free member. So the game we'll be building in this series will be in the style of a visual novel, which, as you may have noticed by the thumbnail for this video, is quite common in Japanese gaming culture, but it is enjoyed by some fans in the West, so it's going to be quite focused and unique. We'll be making it for free and it will cost you absolutely nothing as long as you put your mind to it. So who is this tutorial series for? Well, it's going to be aimed at newcomers to the game development world, as well as intermediate developers. I will take you from a beginner level to an intermediate level by the end of this series. And even if you're a veteran to making games, stick around to see just how we tackle different things and the different methods that we use to achieve the desired effect. So this first tutorial will explain how to get Unity on your PC. We'll explore the hub. And we'll get acquainted with the engine interface itself and even start inserting some objects into our game. So, how do you get Unity? Simple. Go to unity.com, click download. And what that will do is it will download the hub. And the hub looks a little something like this. You can see I have my projects here. And over on the left hand side, you have something called installs. It's vital to have an install. What this is, is the engine itself. Different versions come with different features. You know, if you go back many, many years, 2017, you'll have a different looking Unity. If you're using Unity 2021, it'll look a little bit different again. 2022, it'll look different again. And in the future, Unity 6, they'll all look a little bit different, but fundamentally, they are the same. What you'll need to do is you'll need to click Install Editor, and then you can select whatever version you want. I would recommend sticking with the most recent stable version. So. Once we've got our Unity installed, how do we create a project? Real simple, big blue button up here, new project. Once you've got that selected, because this is going to be a visual novel style game, we'll be building this in 2D. So you just need to select the 2D built-in render pipeline. You could theoretically select 3D or anything else. It doesn't really matter too much because you can still use the same techniques, but because we are going to aim for 2D, we're going for this one right here. You can name your project, so call it Visual Novel Game or whatever you want to call it. Select your folder location where you want to save it. And then you can select the organization if you're online. So your organization is just your account that you've logged into Unity with. That's all. You can then either connect to Unity Cloud if you want to, and you can use the version control again if you want to. It's entirely up to you. They're not important. Well, they are important, but they're not vital to what we are doing in this development series. Once you're happy, click Create Project. And once you do that, you'll have something that looks a little like this after a couple of minutes of the project building itself up. What is this? This is the main development engine, Unity. There are a couple of different things that we can see on screen which may look a little bit daunting to newcomers to game development, but don't worry about them. They look confusing, but they're really not. Over here, we have the Hierarchy panel. And Hierarchy Panel is a great place to store all of your assets in your game. Basically, you can see them via words, hence we've got a main camera. And what are assets? And what happens if I click this? Well, you can see it highlights this right here. And what is this right here? This is the scene view. The scene view is where we can build our game visually. So any assets that we bring into our game, we bring into the scene view and we can see it right here. A couple of different things you can do with the scene view. You can select a little hand tool here and you can move yourself around. You can also hold the middle mouse wheel to do the same thing. You can roll the mouse wheel back and forth to zoom in, zoom out. And the right mouse button again will pan around, same as what the middle mouse button will do. In a 3D environment, it does behave a little bit differently, but because we're in 2D, don't really need to worry too much. This icon here will allow you to select things. And you can see that we do indeed have an X and a Y positioning. However, even in 2D, we do still have the option for a Z or Z axis. 
We don't need to worry too much about it right now. It isn't too important. We just need to understand that this scene view is where we see all of our assets and where we build our game. Speaking of game, this next tab along up here, this is where we can play our game. We can play our game in here to test it, to debug it, without having to build the whole game up and play it through the application. We can play it in engine to test it out. Over here is the inspector panel. What is the inspector panel? Best way to put it is this is where all the information about your assets that you have selected is stored. So for example, we have our main camera selected here, and this is all the information that we currently have attached to our camera. And each of these sections is known as a component. Every single asset will have at least one component, which is called the transform component. And this dictates where it is, which way it's facing on how big or how small it is. Position, rotation, and scale. So you could change these whenever you need to. Obviously, because this is a camera, we have a camera component and we can set different things that we need to here. As we go through game development for this series, we probably will change a couple of camera settings, but right now they don't need to be really changed. They're, they're good as they are. And what is the camera? That just basically renders whatever we've built. Down here, we have the project panel. Now the project panel is where we store all of our assets. What's an asset? Well, an asset can be pretty much anything. It can be a picture, it can be a script, it can be an audio file, it can be an animation, anything at all, really. And all these things put together is what builds up our game in the scene view. So we store them all here, hopefully neat and tidy in these folders. Next tab along, we have the console. The console is a great tab to look at whenever you have problems debugging your game. So you'll have all the errors. Let's say you've created a script and something's not right with it. You try your game. You're not sure what's gone wrong. This console will display what the error is, not necessarily how to fix it, but where you should look to try and fix it. And then you can debug it from there. So later on in development, this console will become vital to how we develop. Next is a tab that you may not have because by default, it may not necessarily come with your build. Um, it is the animation tab. And the animation tab is a great way to create very simple but effective animations in Unity. So if you want to animate, let's say, in a 3D world, your playable character to swing his sword, jump up and down, do this, that, and the other, the animation tab is not really designed for that. You could do it and you can edit things that way, but to create an animation from scratch, it's more designed for simplistic animations, let's say like fading and simple movements, things like that. But we will be using this animation tab later on in development. So if you don't have it, all you would need to do is click on these three little dots here, click on add tab, and then you can go down to animation. And it will click it uh, right here for you. But if you don't like it here, you can detach it. Easy, drag and drop any tab anywhere in Unity. So I love the versatility of that. And if you like it how it is originally, then follow how I do it. I'm going to keep my layout of Unity the same as how it comes by default. But if you don't want to, you can put your hierarchy over here next to your inspector panel if you wanted to. You get it how you want it, how you feel comfortable working. Now, I know a lot of people who are already in the game development world will recognize this layout because it's very similar in all different engines, whether you're using Godot, Unreal, Unity, whichever. They all look very, very similar. So now we've got used to all these panels, what else should we look at before we start developing anything? Well, if we go to File and go to Build Settings, here we can see everything we need to know about our target platform. So currently our target platform is Windows, Mac, Linux, as indicated by the little Unity icon right here. But you can develop for any platform. So whatever you build in Unity can be ported to any platform at any time, providing you have the modules and the licenses. So for example, if you wanted to build for PS4, you would need to get the license for them, and you would also need to install the platform module. Now, all you would do is just click the button, Sort out your license, you'd go through Unity for all that, um, speak to Sony, you know, do all whatever else. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, we are building for PC in this tutorial series. However, we will also be making it dual platform. 
So we are going to make this playable on mobile devices. So let's say, for example, Android. Uh, everything we do is going to be playable on Android, on an Android phone, for example, at the same time as being on a PC. If you wanted to switch to Android at this point in development, you would just click on Switch Platform. If you weren't happy, you could always go back to Windows, Mac, Linux, and Switch Platform again. Option would be here, and you would switch it. You can switch at any point during development. Just keep in mind, though, the longer you develop a game for, further into development, the longer it will take to switch platform. In the case of this game, I don't think it'll take too long to switch platform at any point because it's not going to be a graphically intensive, massive, huge game. It's just going to be quite simple in that respect. So uh, let's keep this as it is for now or switch to Android or whatever if you want to. And there are plenty of other options to explore within Unity, uh, but we will come to those as and when we need them. We have pretty much all the basics in place now, so let's add something to our game. Let's add a game object. So let's go to Game Object, UI, and let's go to Raw Image. Now you can see that this raw image looks huge, as opposed to our little frame here. If we go to Game View, you can see that realistically it doesn't cover it too much. However, if we go to our main camera, you can see that it covers just that there. So we need to now adjust our uh, objects to kind of fit within the game window. There are many different ways to do that, uh, but one clever thing that we can do so we can get a view of what it looks like in the game at all times is do what we did earlier. Let's uncouple the game tab and let's snap it over to the right side so we can see the game view at the same time as we can see the scene view. So what can we do here? Well, let's adjust a couple of things. Let's select the rec tool here and let's expand that just a little bit. So what we've done there is we've expanded our camera view to be more in line with our scene view, as you can see right here. So it is kind of square, so it has become square. So now let's take our raw image and let's zero out the position. And this will put it dead center of our scene. So zero, zero. And you can see right there, dead center. So zero, zero, zero on the X, Y, and Z is always dead center of your scene. And if we double click this raw image now, you can see it focuses it on the scene view. And if we zoom out, we can see now there is our game view. So now I'm going to reattach the game view next to the scene view. Oh, well, I didn't want to uh, uncouple it, but hey, that's, uh, that's not really helpful. Anyway, uh, if we press play, we can see once it started building, it's thinking about it, that everything will turn a slight shade of uh, gray darker. And it re really is thinking about that, isn't it? Sometimes Unity might do this. It's just kind of building things. It's not really a concern. There we go. So as you can see, if we press play now, we get the full game view. And everything has gone just that tad little bit darker. So if we press play now, you'll see that it goes a little bit lighter. And there are many, many different things that we can do. So if that, uh, you see what I did there? If you click on that little button that we had there and click on default, it will redo everything that it had done. So what can we do now? Well, not too much really, because a lot of game development requires assets like I spoke about earlier. We can change the some size of this. Let's change this to 300 by 300. So what we've done there is change the height and the width of this object to 300 by 300. Now we could move it down here and you'll see that things are starting to snap with different colors. You'll see oranges and blues. And the, what that means is the objects are aligning and snapping into position. Remember, we still have our rect tool just here. So 
back into game view, you can see that this object is now over on the right side of the screen. So we've pretty much got all the basics we are gonna need, at least for now, because what we're gonna do next tutorial is import our first character and start exploring the visual aspects of our game. So next tutorial, like I said, I'll give you those assets for free. I'll show you where to get them. And we will actually have our character right there doing something. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial in this series. And I will see you next time.